Hello, the YouTubers Alex here, back with some more Subnautica. Once again, it's another base design. You can see the common trend that of my videos, it seems. Um, <laughs> so anyway, this is actually a base requested by one of my uh, subscribers, and this one is underneath the floater islands, as you can roughly see. And if you couldn't obviously tell by the sheer amount of steam and smoke, it's a base down in the volcanic vent region. And I got carried away with it. It's quite it's not as big as the island outpost that I did back on top of the floater islands up there, but it's not also really small either. Uh, but there is some practical purposes. Um, it's not all for role playing, even though I'd kind of put some of those, you know, like things like bedrooms and mess halls, which are obviously not strictly necessary uh, for any actual survival, but regardless, this is the base as you can roughly see. So we'll go into the inside in a second, but it, there are actually <laughs> elements down in the volcanic vents which I do like the look of down there as it is pretty cool and all um, and it obviously does straddle quite a few of the vents there's some over here, two over there, got your moon pools and uh, that region lit up down there that has a rather unique purpose which I will get into later on so uh, we're gonna go through here now just another word I should mention <sighs> doors they're glitched out again for me so I'm afraid things like the get going through doors is going to require me to basically knock them out every time. I don't know if it's if, it, if that's a glitch with me. Have you if any of you had this glitch? If so, let me know because I'm on. A, is it just my game that's bug, bugged out or whatever it is? Uh, I don't know. But as you can immediately see right in front of you, uh, apart from my frame rate going down the pan here, is we have a greenhouse, pretty self explanatory, and the door that I just knocked out was to the glass observatory. Uh, above the other vent here. Um, one thing I would have to say, um, you would think being this close to active lava essentially and with all the heat and the vents spewing out lots of lava anyway, you'd think I'd have to put like heat shielding or something on a lot of the components of the base, but apparently not, so uh, for the, <laughs> I ain't complaining. So anyway, we'll pop upstairs. This room is the only fairly generic room apart from just a sort of snack area. Um, but this one, if I don't get stuck on the uh, <laughs> seat there, but that takes me to the scanner room. And you can see here are some of the uh, area things you could scan for. Apparently there's prawn suit stuff uh, down here, which actually wouldn't surprise me. The heat area is pretty self-explanatory, and any of the else, any of the other bits of crap, then so be it. And there's even a, a wreck, uh, which I would have to presume is a chunk of the aurora somewhere, which actually, now, now I remember, it is above us, because that's the thing, we are actually... What well, we are just below uh, the last place we did the base on, so that's that. So anyway, we're moving on this way. Once again, I um, apologise for the frame rates, uh, but there's, uh, at this point, there's no point in me trying to complain or uh, uh, keep saying sorry because uh, otherwise I'll probably get hoarse in the voice. But anyway, uh, you can see one of the vents uh, down there. I do love the look of this, <laughs> to be honest. Just like you, you just having some of these glass corridors, but you'd think I'd have to heat shield this. And also, like, look at all those like fragments of stone that bit, and lava that are being th thrown up here. You'd think that should be a, a mechanic. Maybe um, all these bits of lava and stuff might have a chance to uh, rupture the side of these um, uh, walls and stuff. I don't know. It, so it's like high risk, high reward. But you can see a nice glass section here. Uh, this is the bit straddling the two vents, as you can sort of see down there. It's actually some more of the base, but. Uh, I'm starting up in the higher up uh, regions, and there is something in my eye. God damn it! Um, so we're closing that door. I have not signed this it, this whole place, as you can pretty much see. Um, probably because I got a bit bored after a while. <laughs> I was working on this base for like two days, uh, so at that point I was just like, well, I need to get this video up uploaded, preferably today. So I just thought, well, the base is done, mostly speaking, uh, with decorations and signs. Doesn't really uh, matter too much. So anyway, well, while I'm staring at this room right now, this is the workstation room. Service planetary. You could see this, uh, the, once again, my sort of standing uh, locker thing, which I do like the look of. It's just a nice sort of thing you could actually stick in the centre here without taking up too much room. But yeah, you can sort of see it's pretty service planetary. Upstairs is a bedroom with some communications reader. Apparently there's a message, it's probably the ones I've not even looked at yet, and a nice glass sort of observatory. And not to mention, this is the sort of place, it's going to be hard to sleep here, you'd think, um, probably because this is the sheer amount of geothermal 
like energy being released and all the roaring and the of the, of the well of the lava as it does its thing. So this is definitely well living anywhere volcanic as I've done here is definitely not the sort of place to go if you don't like that sort of noise. Right now I got to remember where is where. So where is here? That takes me downstairs to the prawn stuff, which I will show you in a moment. Just trying to make them. This is where I need to put signs, but I didn't. So there you go. Right, this is at the far end, uh, which has an aquarium. So you just have your fish and whatnot here. Uh, I got another water and power room, sort of bit of bit of both really. Uh, the reason being is if you want to know where the power is, because not surprisingly it's geothermal. Uh, but these two vents are the ones where I have the thermal plants. But once again, another sort of thing you'd think, surely these um, power generator things would start to get damaged just by the sheer amount of stuff being ejected from the ground. I mean, it, it's like, I mean, temperature-wise down where these things are, it's like 60 degrees, maybe a bit more. Oh yeah, if you didn't notice, uh, if there was... If there was I stand correct, maybe not in this vent. Um, normally there's like, these vents are like full of fish because they get cooked every time um, the thing erupts. Um, here's me thinking if there's any way of you surviving the lava for more than three seconds, you could actually go and um, get some dinner as the, it's already cooked for you, so that's that. So anyway, we're going to pop back here before my frame rate literally does take a huge dump all over the floor. And we'll move on to the other portions where I, I believe we've got the moon pool areas, um, the special area, which I will get into in a bit, and also the areas down underground, um, or in the vents even. Y you know what I mean. Uh, so through this bulkhead is the moon pool area, at least for the seam off, because at least in this particular location, uh, it doesn't matter, you can have your seam off anywhere. It's not going to like get crushed, it's only 500 meters down. That's one thing I will mention uh, again, if you want me to build anywhere specifically, if you have a specific location in this game that you want me to see if I can make a cool base out of, uh, then let me know down in the comments. As this, I mean, this current base you're looking at was a user request, so I don't mind doing these things, it gives me something else to do. Um, I was considering making a base possibly down in the Jelly Shroom Caves, um, but I'm not too sure. There's not actually that much interesting down there, at least stuff-wise. and. It's one of those places that you're going to have to keep leaving the Jelly Shroom to do to do anything. Um, so, yes, yeah, so we now have a random uh, hatch here, which just takes you outside if you need to actually get outside um, quickly anyway. So we'll pop down one level. Uh, that takes you to the prawn area, which, I, to be honest, I want to show you last, because that's... Uh, actually, no, screw it. Um, but the prawn area brings me to one of the more unique aspects of what I've been doing, at least uh, using the terrain, because like this place is full of holes, right? As you can see, full of holes. Um, now, there's no point in me going through there, because that just takes me down uh, down here and to that observatory area, but let me actually just explain what I've been doing. Because um, this is something that people probably either don't know or haven't really had much need to, to use or to do or whatever. Uh, but you know the propulsion cannon, you can actually pick up the big ore deposits. And as you can see, I filled up this pit full of ore deposits. <laughs> I've even I've lit this up with some nice floodlights. And the idea is you could you can go around with a propulsion cannon equipped prawn suit or whatever, um, pick up all this crap, get home, um, have some extra modules in in, in storage, uh, and just go ahead and and just basically mine within a nice sort of safe area. Um, and as you can see, it's quite effective. Um, good question. Is this, um, are these diamonds? Wait, wait a minute. Are these actually diamonds? Huh. So, realizing what I've just picked up, is, uh, <laughs> I've, I got 99% diamonds, um, at least in this particular pit. So, um, you, you get, you get kind of the idea of this particular use, um, I thought of, uh, with this area. So there's just diamonds literally everywhere. <laughs> and if this was real life, you would be rich rich, completely rich to the point of probably insanity, and then uh, as long as you have the storage mediums, because I suppose that, that's the thing, if, if, if you if you have all the modules down here and there's no need to travel far, so in what this can, current prawn has just obviously a regular arm, oh, assuming it wants to let me pick this stuff up, I, I, I said pick it up, I'm only doing this to prove a concept here, um, but all four of my uh, modules are actually storage modules, so you can go around and mine quite a lot of this, it seems. 
I don't know what this is. I something tells me this is copper. Um, but what you're seeing here is the, all the stuff in the local area down here. So there's uranite. Apparently there's diamonds. I swear this was quartz. Maybe this is just me. Um, and I believe this is copper as well. So these are the three main materials you're going to find down here. Um, and this particular room over here, if I pop out, I do actually have a, a quick access hatch here. Um, you could call this just like a sort of the mining area. So you have, uh, once again, role playing aspects. You could be tallying up uh, resource counts and what you've been finding, keeping a track of loot and where it's going, uh, some storage. Uh, and we also have battery charging because the floodlights. I wish the flood. Oh, God, don't tell me it's going to glitch out again. It's glitching out. I forgot to say, it won't let, let me out. Thank you. Um, but the floodlights, they run on batteries, which I would love to see a way to add, like, a, a power line. Like, can I run a cable uh, to power these off at the base? Because, I mean, I'm only using these because it lights up the area very well. I've got four of them, I think. And it, it just lights up this whole sort of facility down here and then the big loot area. So you have plenty of light to mine and stuff of that nature. So that's all well and good. All right, let's park this up. And then we'll go down to uh, another one of the really nice areas of the place, at least in my opinion, of course. And that's down in the lava region. Um, because that area looks really cool. And I keep forgetting I can't actually use bulkheads because the things are glitched. <sighs> how about um, how about the developers try and fix this thing? Eh? Right, so we'll go right down here. Now we've suddenly dropped a huge level, uh, degree-wise. Um, by 50 meters, I think. There is a... A hatch here. Is this, is this my torch? No, I can't actually see. Um, so we are down in one of the inactive uh, sort of lava pits. But anyway, if we pop down into here, I don't need this torch to put it away. Uh, but now we are heading into. Uh, I got two of these um, particular vents with well corridors in, and I got to say that area just looks awesome. I don't, know, I don't know why, but just building in literally like, inside one of these thermal vents as you can see I, it actually I actually do have a, a little section that goes even lower um, and as you, if I, as I head round I don't know this just looks cool this just this did take a while to do and there wasn't actually any terraforming you can see like a, a lump of terraform material over there where my crosshair is assuming this smoke and steam would go away um, that was probably because the lower down section was just a bit of a pain to fit because I was trying to get the vertical sections um, to, well, go down so further into the earth. Just, there is actually a, a, a viewing station literally down at the lava level. And um, well, I'm going to say you would uh, definitely need heat shielding down there, but that's not really a thing in this game. Um, and let's just destroy. Sometimes I can fix the door glitch by just restarting my game, but. I've restarted like five or six times uh, thus far and I've had no success. Um, so yeah, once again, you could think of this as just a, a research station for the um, activity around here. And I don't know, this just looks pretty uh, pretty cool despite the fact my frame rate is literally going down the toilet. Um, so yeah, fairly generic research area. Now through this door is another observatory because um, even this, this particular vent over here um, you're not at the lava level quite, at least where that desk is, but over here, um, the ne like the literally adjacent vent, um, and that's the point. Um, if you you can't really see it, but up there is the glass corridor that spans the two uh, the two vents. So now this particular observatory is down at those two vents. So just to give you a rough, rough, rough perspective, and there's just cooked spade fish and. Uh, those were air sacs, but now they're bladder fish, I think, so, um, yeah, <laughs> you are literally down at the lava level here, but th this does look pretty nice, um, if I don't say so myself, so, anyway, let's, um, let us move back, um, move back on here, um, that's, that's one good thing I haven't just, I haven't thought of, hopefully the game isn't too deafeningly loud, I have not actually done any, uh, uh, volume testing, but I mean this particular area of the game is quite loud anyway, but so it's not too deafening. So anyway, through this bulkhead, if I knock it out, uh, we head down the furthest point. Um, this is to the observatory area, as I mentioned before. As you can see, right at the bottom of the vent, and you can even sit down here and just watch the lava as it uh, does its thing, as it uh, just keeps jettisoning hot steam and water every once in a while. So. I don't know, that looks quite nice. So anyway, let's head upstairs. As I've pretty much 
uh, shown you guys all that this base has to offer. It's once again not. I mean, to, to do this. I mean, oh yeah, there's a hatch here, of course. But um, to do this particular section in uh, in survival would be very impractical, just because of the sheer amount of dangerous hot steam uh, that happens to be uh, constantly ejecting out of the uh, these vents. But as as just like. If I ignore all of that and I just look at the base, you know, where it is in the world and, and how, you know, moulding the most of the uh, base to the terrain rather than using the base, you know, how, like, buildings terraform land automatically, rather than using that, you, you can do quite a lot of cool stuff. Um, I mean, I do like this mining area. It's just something that people probably don't normally think of. Um, and I suppose that's another thing. Um, how many people even, even use the prawn suit to mine? It is a bit of a slow process, but then I suppose if you do the like di to, to collect this amount of ore you can see down there, that was probably about 45 minutes worth of collecting, and it would probably take equal amount of time to mine it. But then you have to think how like one of these big blocks of diamond. Um, that's a good question. How many bits of diamond did that actually give me? Probably quite a bit, because the idea is if you put the time investment in and just collect the loot, um, then when you're done you get a lot of stuff. So that was seven seven diamond uh, from one of those ore blobs. So y surely you can see the fact that, you know, time aside, you're going to get a lot of loot out of it if you actually put the time and effort into it. But I suppose it's just finding these particular uh, chunks of mineral as, um, you know, th this is all that's in the local area. To get anything else, I'm going to have to travel quite far away. And to pick up one of those ore blobs and carry it all the way back to the base, put it in here, switch out my tools and then mine it. Like, the whole picking up and taking it home part takes a long time. Not to mention if you like move too quickly or you fall down too fast, um, you'll lose grip of it. The um, propulsion cannon will just lose, well, it, it won't hold it anymore since you've travelled too far. Um, because the blob of ore doesn't move particularly fast, like faster than you can, so I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to leave, I'm gonna leave this video here, so uh, hopefully this was another inspirational idea if you want to build something down here. If you have a specific place, once again, if you want me to build somewhere, then let me know down in the comments and I will certainly consider it. So anyway, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.